before it started. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us call the meeting to order the reserve in place that cognitive dysfunction and cognitive dysfunction. Okay, first up tonight on the agenda is Jeff from the Amateur Council of Governments, and you're going to talk about profit sharing. I am. And that implies that there are some profits to share, but uh, yes, but that there were. So. Right. Okay, so I wouldn't mind actually sitting right, over there by the microphone. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe a little bit of background on that, right? The background, right? Yeah. Is my is my hair right? <laughs> <laughs> my tie You look fine. We're not live. Thank you for having me, in, and thank you for putting me uh, first on the agenda. I appreciate that. Sure. Been a lot of night meetings lately. Um, as you know, the, most of the town accounts are on our profit sharing program. Maybe I should give a little background for, uh -huh. for the way I, I work for the Hampshire Council of Governments, and I am the basically sales and account manager guy for the Hampshire Power, which is our uh, electricity supply program. And the town, the town of Southampton, has uh, been a profit sharing customer um, through Hampshire Power since. Uh, fiscal 07. Seven at least in this yeah. chart. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, with the exception of the water department, which is on uh, our other program, which is called Real Time, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, the profit sharing program, the way that has worked is in a good year when we have a budget surplus, we share half of that budget surplus with everybody that's in a profit sharing program. So um, over the years, uh, Southampton has had four separate profit rebate checks through, through that program, which total about $13,000. Now our other program is known as Real Time, and Real Time is an indexed program. Mm -hmm. The way it works is uh, the index is the, the spot market uh, daily price, mm -hmm. the, the price du jour, I like to call it. Um, so, uh, and that's a volatile market in that it goes up and down all the time and uh, varies seasonally with, uh, it's a real good supply demand um, example. Um, and the way it works is with uh, real time, you pay the real time price that we're paying plus an adder, which is three cents per kilowatt hour if you're not a member town and if you are a member town then it's 2.7. 10% discount. And of course, Southampton is a member. So what I did was I looked at those uh, the past five years, and I compared Southampton's load with uh, an, another community that has similar load, cur load profile and uh, similar usage. And I figured out what you would have saved as compared to the utility price in that time is about $35,000. So then what I did was I said, just to, to be fair, to look at how much difference there was between the, uh, the profit share rebate that you did receive and the real time amount you would have saved, I subtracted one from the other and came out with about $22,000. You would have been to the good over those past five years had you been on real time. So I'm here tonight to tell you that the, the good news is the profit sharing program is ending very soon, which means that um, this is an excellent opportunity uh, to get onto real time. Did I say that right? Profit sharing is ending. Real time is still with us and doing well. And um, let me pass out a uh, price chart which shows Okay. Um, this price chart, I never know how to do this with, with TV. I don't know if this is visible or not. Um, but uh, what this, this chart, or this graph compares <coughs> is the uh, utility price over the past uh, five years 
compared with our real-time price. So the one we're interested in is the green line, uh, which is uh, the Western Mass Electric Company default service price for commercial accounts. Uh, the red line is National Grid, and the blue line is the real-time price. And you can see it's jiggity-jaggedy, it's up and down. Uh, the utility price is set for six-month periods, which is why it's flat and it bumps up and bumps down. So um, the, the, over, the, the message here is that the overwhelming part of the time, real-time is, is a better buy, it's a better bet than the utility price, um, which means it's better than uh, profit sharing as well. Um, there are a couple of ugly, uh, if we were in, in cave exploration talk, there would be stalagmites that come up from the ground as points. We don't like those. There are a couple of bad ones where they actually cross the, uh, the line, which means that during those uh, times, the price, the real-time price, was above the utility price. Um, like incidentally, in July. I'm sorry? Like this past July? Yes. Last July, July was, was the most recent one. It was a, a hot month. Um, the heat wave, uh, due to like, um, air conditioning demand, the price spiked. Didn't stay up for very long, uh, but it was there. And the previous winter, we had a cold, snowy winter. That tends to increase the gas demand, and these prices are all basically uh, uh, tied very closely to the gas futures market. And then the summer of 2008, uh, we're all trying to forget that summer, but that was when uh, eating oil was 4.59 a gallon, and um, the whole petroleum world went kablooey. But I draw your attention to after that summer, uh, the wholesale price, the real-time price, plummeted, stayed down for a long time. That was when the economy, the world economy kind of crashed. But you'll note that the power company prices stayed up for a while. And the reason for that is the power companies, both National Grid and Western Mass Electric, uh, they both go out to bid for gas futures mm -hmm. to hedge um, for six months at a time. And whatever that hedge is, that's where their default service price is going to be. So, um, what I like to say, uh, I, may be, I may become famous for uttering this, this mantra, um, I'm not an economist, not, not trained in the futures markets or anything like that, but um, my brief experience of working with this stuff is you can do very well with predicting things like, like uh, futures and energy prices, 25% um, of you're doing very well with it is being smart and knowing what you're doing, and 75% of it is just plain old luck. And I'll tell you, uh, here's an excellent example of that. Um, right here when that, that price spike was happening in the summer of 2008, that was the time when the power companies had to go out to bid for gas futures to hedge. And they have to do it every six months because by law they have to set their, their price for a six month period. They went out to bid as the prices were spiking, which meant that the gas futures they had were way up here. The market dropped away and they were stuck. Now, the other side, and that's just plain old bad luck. You know, they have a room full of analysts and people with PhDs in economics to try to figure this stuff out. But, you know, luck was bad for them. What happened about a year ago was the opposite. Uh, they went out to bid right when the market was down, when the gas market was at a, a low, a stalactite. Uh, they went out to bid for the next 12 months. So you can see the prices are at historic lows right now for, for um, the default service from you and the power companies which makes it tough for us to compete. We don't have that nice big gulf where the blue line is way below. Um, what's gonna happen next is that they're about to go out to bid again. Um, I don't have a crystal ball, but gas prices, uh, gas futures are up from where they were a year ago. So I think <coughs> we're gonna see that the utility price is gonna bump up. Um, and I think that you will see that real time is uh, once again much better than uh, than the utility default service price. Having said that, there is a risk with real time that you get another stalagmite where you are stuck with it until it comes down again. But it always does come down, and uh, we can 
we can definitely say that for five years, four years out of the past five, real time has, has been uh, far and away the best bet. Um, <clears throat> through the life of uh, the program of Hampshire Power, we have saved municipalities $1.4 million compared to the utility prices. And of that, 1.1 million is attributable to the real-time program. The rest of it was through profit share. So real-time works. Um, we believe in it. Um, and if the board is willing to convert those accounts from profit sharing over to real-time, then uh, I would, uh, I'd be very pleased. And I just happen to have a, a contract with me in case you choose to, to do that. And I'm happy to answer any questions. <coughs> Okay, well, thank you very much, Jeff. Um, <coughs> does the board have any questions for Jeff? One comment. This is just like the stock market. You're not going to win unless you're in, right? Exactly. You've got to stick it up for a while. It may be a rough, rough patch, but stick around for a while and, and uh, it's, it's going to pay off. But you know, you no longer offer the profit sharing. Profit sharing, right. So what's our alternative? I mean, to be in this program, it's real time. Yeah, the, the other alternative is, is we, we go back to the utility company to the default service price, which is, which is the green line. And, you know, quite honestly, right now, that's not a bad place to be. Um, it, it's hard to tell on this, on this graph. Um, the real-time price is a little bit below the, uh, the Wamiko price. It's kind of hidden behind the red line, but it's, it's there. So right now we're, we're better off. Today, for instance, the real-time price was about 6.3 cents, including the adder. Um, and actually it'd be 6.0 for you guys because you have the 2.7 cent adder as a member town. So today's a good day. Um, this has been a good month. Um, <coughs> monthly average has been about 7 cents, about 7.0. Utility price is about 7.4 right now for, for commercial. Um, historically, September, October, November, early December are really good times for, for real time because there's not a lot of heating demand yet. In the winter, we often get a little bit of a bump, but that usually isn't as bad as the, uh, the air conditioning. Uh, so is it fair to say then, Jeff, that your real time price that you offer the members, then is, you guys are in a sense hedging the constantly shifted at the dispatch point? Yes, exactly. Okay. Which changes all the time. Do you use the Chilean model here for dispatch? I think? I'm not familiar with that. It's the ISO New England grid? Yes, it's through ISO, yes. So, okay, so the other way of looking at this too is that, well, obviously this is an unregulated market through Western Mass and National Grid. Um, can you say there was any money, that they were making money on this? I mean, this is, the blue line is what you're selling electricity for to your members. You're paying some other price than that, of course, because yeah. there's a... The, the blue line is actually the non-member price. Oh, okay. So it's, it's, uh, it's not much different. It's three-tenths of a cent below that. But, mm -hmm. uh, so. <clears throat> Eighth of an inch below that, I suppose. Okay. So basically, the non-members um, non are subsidizing the members. We're, we make we make nothing on the, the 2.7 cent adder. We just barely break even. We're not losing money. We're not losing money. But the uh, if you're not a member town, <coughs> you're paying three cents uh, for the adder. Then that goes into subsidizing the rest of the mm -hmm. <coughs> There are other ways, of course, to approach these non-regulated utilities too. As you know, as municipals and things like that, you're buying units and all that yeah. stuff. Are you aware of anything out there other than this? this well, as, as far as nonprofits, no. There, there are lots of for-profit mm. companies that would, would love to sign you up. You know, there's Constellation and Dominion and I can rattle off a dozen. Uh, they, lately, the prices I've been seeing from those guys are a little bit above the utility price. Um, the good news with those guys is they offer you a fixed price for a set period. The longer the period, the higher the price, because you know, further out there is, is more risk there. Sure. Okay. All right. And just one other question that I had is, we are in the middle right now of doing an investment grade audit with Siemens, and the idea obviously is to reduce the energy load here too. So, 
it would be really nice to say that because we're going to reduce it so much, but also, in a sense, reduce our savings, we will be saving a percentage of a smaller amount. So that's one way an economist might say, what? Yeah, well, it's, it's true. I mean, it's like uh, the, more you, the more you pay, the more you save. You're going to buy a Cadillac <laughs> right. on sale. You're going to save more money than the, right. the Corolla. But, um, I'm not sure how much in a, on a percentage basis. Are you, are you aware of any of what they might be even predicting at Siemens? 10%, um, 15%? Um, well, remember that they are going to make, they have to pay out the capital expenditures. Correct. And the savings over a 20 year period. True. And um, it's going to be hard to replace with that to be a 20 year period. And they change the type of contract. They're talking about the big savings. My preliminary talks with them last week. Mm -hmm. um, they had a guideline that basically um, the school would be the biggest saver. So one of our biggest users outside there, I think, water substance of uh, power. And then we're going to um, change the boilers and um, we'll make things more efficient. Mm -hmm. The boilers within an hour are only less than 15 years old. But considering how, how far we came those 15 years, just on this availability of comparison, how we can regulate the room and control uh, your spaces from not when it's not occupied, having motion detection to determine the lights on and off, should say what I'm about. But that's what they're saying, so these savings are over there. Right, after the capital expenditures are and, uh, paid down. Jeff, just one other question then, too. Um, looking through you know, the fine print here, too, um, the terms, should we decide to go off into some other program? What are our constraints in that situation? Well, it's, it's a 12-month contract, and it, it's a self-renewing contract unless you get a hold of us 60 days ahead of the renewal date, right. um, in which case we part as friends, I hope. Um, well, of course, I mean, an exit strategy, or at least an exit awareness, is important. As far as, as uh, reducing your load, uh, that's certainly not a problem if once the Siemens improvements start <coughs> using less power, that's, you know, that's great. I always say to people that the only thing I like better than selling them electricity is finding out that they're using less or producing their own from renewable sources. We're, we're totally on board with that. So. Okay. Jeff, yeah, I one thing that I think is a um, it's not just the fuel cost and buying electricity. The demand charges, I think, to me, uh, are one of the biggest killers. In other words, if you have a demand that's consistent mm -hmm. right across the line, it's fine. But if you go over the projections of what the demands are for, say, our electric bills, our rates skyrocket. Right. Mm -hmm. And it still hasn't changed. You want to use more without notice, you don't use more. Same as phones and so many other things that we use. Well, I understand. It's a remarkable difference in the electric bills if, for instance, we go into a high period, say, take things as the pumps that do, so many high, so many high, of course, power so go out, and they go in and we have a big demand because we're using a lot of water, and our demand is here, and all of a sudden we have 30 days of consistent demand. We're up here, we're paying a lot of money just to have that demand being met around the utilities, which we can keep consistent across the line, like Siemens trying to do, you're going to hold a lot of those things in check. Right, so we'll still have the demand charge in our bill. This yeah, is the actual question. That's electric, not right, this. exactly. This is fuel and right. We had to talk to them at some point. You're right, that's a, that's a good point. Demand charges are, are in there. Uh, just, this is not going to have anything to make a decision. I, I changed all from the um, Profit sharing. Profit sharing. I don't think it was like two months and I just didn't like it. I didn't feel comfortable with it because it yields more that good for us. There was not money that we're spending for power on a monthly basis to water department. So I went and reviewed the three processes and I asked for background on what they did over a period of years. What I looked at was all, they were all positive those, that, uh, I think the two years I looked at it and they were up there. But since we've been on it, we've only been in it's gone below us from last week three times. Okay? And for a bill of three or four thousand dollars a month was we only went down about three five, three dollars each time. Below that. But when we went above them we were talking three or three hundred. 
150, 200 hours on a monthly basis in cities versus most cities with Western Mass. And, you know, if you take that in, on this part of the year, uh, we had 90 months that we had three bad months. When we averaged it out, we had good months that were in the 300 range, 400 range, 200 dollar range, and the bad months were like 34 hours and 40 dollars and 50 hours. Difference. Right. So, but you you have a year, which is a one year contract, if you're having a bad time, you, you got the option to get out. That's all I'm saying. And that's why I wanted to change the for profit. Because when we were doing better with the market, we were doing much better um, right, with profits. And we were doing, basically, we buy our fuel that way for you know, gas and diesel. We watch the markets all the time. If we're hurting, I'll only buy a minimum amount of fuel. But the market has dropped quite a bit. That's what I buy. I try to keep that in mind all the time. Sure. Yeah, we all have apply this to this. And, yeah, it, it's like Doug said. It's, it, you know, some days you don't know. It's a crapshoot some days. Other days you're going to benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to say that to convince you to go to them. I'm just telling you our experience with the water department. I have a question for you, Mr. Collier. Can you chair for me? So uh, this recommendation that Mr. Rogers is giving, do you go along with this? Work for us. Yeah. I mean, do you have to go back and look at your alternatives? It's your call. I'm asking you because you've got far more experience with it than I. Therefore, I'm seeking your advice. I, I don't know what you have for your bills on a monthly basis, but each bill is derived on each account, right? So if you have 40 accounts in the town, it's depending on all accounts, then it's average down. Um, no, each each account has its own deal, yeah, and, okay. and you get a, you get a summary of every quarter that shows how you're doing compared to the utility company, with whether we saved you money or if we cost you money, we, we let you know that too. But on this one here, you get it every month. Say that again. You get your savings or loss each month, so you know you're going. You're not going to get a quarterly report. Mm -hmm. But we do would have a year's contract. Yes. Yeah. And to answer your question, Doug, it's been good for us, but we use a lot of power on um, um, the high demand times, which is the summer. And other than that, we've got a, a demand load that's consistent with rest of the day. Mm -hmm. okay. That makes a difference. We're finding that. Where we find savings and what we spend on the door is to keep that demand as, as level as possible as we can. And if we looked at our individual bills, we have to have to it. But if you looked at your individual bills and you've got high demands on certain things, you need to find out what's doing that and just a lot more money than just this bill stuff. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for a motion, sir? I'm ready for a motion. Okay, based on the testimony we've just received, I would like to make a motion to uh, go forth with the recommendations of the Hampshire Council of Governments. Okay, do we have a second for that motion? No, a second. I'll second. Okay, any further discussion? The motion's been made and seconded to, as we have to anyway, move away from the profit sharing plan with Hampshire Council of Governments and enter into at least a one year binding contract to buy electricity at what they call real time plus standard. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 You got it. Thank you so much. <coughs> Printer type. This one here? Uh, right there. Under yeah. Okay. Yes, Jeff, sir. may I get a copy of those once the board signs? Yes. Would well, you mind if I made a copy? I, I will get that executed. And okay. Back okay. Thank you. No, that'll be fine. Thank you. Aviation, so much. Right in the green room. Mm -hmm. yeah, the price of electricity is fixed at different intervals. Mm -hmm. This price, it's fixed sometimes every minute. It's location marginal. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, that's it's, your business. It's, it's I pretty weird. <laughs> I used to build power plants in South America, so I know, uh, I know all the lingo. Okay, so I can... I, I'll just fill in the title. Oh, I know. That's okay. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Jess. Gannon. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff. Okay, moving on then. We are looking for David Garska, tree warden Henry Storms. He is currently upstairs meeting with the finance committee. He will be down as soon as he is done. And John Furman is not here. Okay, open time for the public. The public. George? Uh, you brought up the uh, Siemens report. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you talked to Reggie, but they came over and met with me Thursday. Mm -hmm. We went over from um, all the buildings we did. Um, they wanted me to be the contact person. I said, I'm not at liberty to do that. That's the word is like that. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I don't know if you have something there. I'd be happy to do it for you, but it's your call. Okay. okay. What did they ask me to do? Do you want to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I was not able to get to the meeting yesterday. I had that meeting is actually scheduled for the 26th. And I did oh, not good. get a chance to correct you on that email, but so you still have time. Oh, good. Okay, great. So time to miss it. Yes. <laughs> That's not my intent. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you for that. Okay, so then well, there's a meeting then on this investment grade R on the 26th at 1 o'clock? Yes. So, okay, here in this building. Um, Ed has volunteered very nicely to be the point of contact. <laughs> Did I say? <laughs> 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 I'm going to come to me and deal with my buildings uh, and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> and I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. And I'll make this part of my duty, but if um, you have a member or uh, Okay, so at the risk of sort of involuntarily volunteering somebody, which I would never do, of course, uh, we have actually someone who, would, at the pleasure of the board, would be willing to serve as the point of contact between the town, if you will, and the select board, and Siemens AG in the IGA, the Investment Grade Audit. Um, what would the board like to do with respect to this? You're looking for a volunteer. Are you saying that in fancy language? As, no, I was not. Actually, I was avoiding using the word volunteer. <laughs> so, uh, I would certainly help with this. Right. Well, what we're doing right now is Ed Colley. Uh -huh. Ed Colley was saying that he would be willing to also be a point of contact. Very good. Okay, yeah. good. So I would think if we, have, my sense would be the two of you working so, together. Yeah. You know AC from DC. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I'd be delighted to work yeah, with Mr. Crowley. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, I can't make motions. So, would you like to make a motion? I'll move that down oh. to Mr. Ed Colley and Mr. Douglas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish I had his money. <laughs> work together as a point persons for Siemens. Okay. Do we have a second on that? I'll second that. Okay, motion's been made and seconded then to a point. And actually, I think Reggie, I believe, gets swept into this too. Mm -hmm. I still stand a little bit. Yes. Right. So just to make sure that you're part of this, would you mind amending your motion to include Reggie? I'll make the motion to include Reggie as a point woman. Okay. Along with Doug Blanchard and Ed Cotton. Okay. To be point of contact, okay, can we have a second on the amended motion? Second. Okay, great. Those in favor? Aye. 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 You're all on. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Reggie. And the next thing is, um, I put an application for another grant to reduce to do follow up uh, with the uh, uh, DOT, which is now being monitored for HUD. I mean, that's to follow up with Uh, 
Oh, no, they all hold like the light to go to. Similarly, if I'm available, depending on my schedule, I'd be happy to go. I'm away a few days in October, um, but if I'm here, I'd be happy to go. It's a good time, and it's such that you can hear a rest or Yeah, exactly, right. And some of the military is efficient and strong. Correct. Absolutely. So actually, I was down there at the State House a few, several years ago. Meeting with some of those folks. Yeah. Okay. We'd be happy to do it. Anybody else? We can make it a big entourage. Depends on the day. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to go, but. Sure. Okay. It's, it's really an interesting thing. Yeah. It's you know, hands on what goes on down there. Right. Okay. So you have at least three, four, two to four volunteers here. Good. Okay. Would you drive us? What? Would you be driving? I'll drive. Less than a month. I had a big truck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So John Furman is not. Anything further? Ed? Open no. time. Anything? Okay. Moving on. Then approval of minutes. There are none. Signatures. No payroll warrant. A bill warrant. Jack, would you mind reading out that amount? And we'll get that signed. Okay. Bill warrant number W12-12. $248,074.04. Okay. <coughs> motion to approve this. So moved. We have second? Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, PCFs, PRFs, Disability Forms and Disclosures, Zoning Board of Appeals, Library 2, asterisks. Um, they are currently being reviewed with the Finance Committee. Okay, upstairs. Okay. One day licenses, none. Town owned agreements, none. Housing needs and assessments, nothing. Interim town administrator's report, right? I have a couple items, and they're under um, memo format. One is an item that you tabled at your last meeting. Um, Mr. Paul Spina had requested the use of the building, and the question was, was he a nonprofit agency? And he is. He's okay. with um, semi-quasi with the state. To do the training for that one or two days. Good, okay. What kind of training was that again? I'm yes. sorry. What type of training was that? Um, Title five certification. What? Title five certification. I'll make a motion, if I may. I yep. make a motion to allow him to utilize our facilities here. Okay. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Paul Spina. Okay, you'll let him know that, Reggie. Yes. I'll okay, take anything care. else in here? There's a second item. Um, it's in regards to the fire department, mm -hmm. and it's in regards to the permits and inspections. There is a concern. The um, building inspector was concerned about the lack with the residents having to wait for the fire chief to issue permits or inspections. Mm -hmm. So the inspector is. Um, by law qualified to do the smoke detectors inspections so he's offered to do that while the chief is away but on the other note um, he had recommended to go with the town of East Hampton to see if East Hampton would assist us in issuing the permits for the propane tanks so that the residents do not wait during that time frame that the fire chief is on vacation and in communicating with personnel from the fire department, the pr process, the procedure is we would call the state. So the building inspector gave me the phone number to the state. I'm just asking, would you like me to call the state to have them come in to issue those two inspections or permits for the residents of South Hampton? Are those propane or building? Propane. So nobody else can do it? No. You mean, okay, we, we have, the chief is not here for whatever reason. Yeah. And we have no succession of command. No nobody sense. to take over the inspections. Nobody to do anything. That is correct. <coughs> the way that department was run, from what I understood, is he has done all the inspections and the permits. So, since he's been here. May I address Mr. Kulida? Mr. Chair? Um, Depends on the nature of the conversation because we, you know, just in thinking about what may or may not get disclosed here. No, in other words, are, are you folks not cross-trained? Let's say the chief was to leave us tomorrow, 
sickness or whatever, you, you people, there's no cross-training? Do you follow what I'm saying? As far as doing permits? No. And, and inspections and that sort of thing? So in other words, now that he's gone for like, I think it's two weeks, mm -hmm. we can't, the fire department can't issue certificates of occupancy for new houses or anything of that nature? You'd have to call the state, like Reggie said, and get the compliance officer in here to do it. Hmm. I don't believe you can go to another town and bring them in. Yeah. But you can call the state and he can come in and do the inspections for you. That's interesting. Okay. So, is there a fee associated? Does anybody know with the state coming in? We I'm charge. Not sure. I believe the state would get something out of it, sure. I don't know what our fee is. Go paying. 50, 75, sometimes that rings a bell. Okay, I'd like to make a motion we authorize Reggie to go to the state and proceed with our business. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Yes. Yeah. You second? Yes. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to authorize Reggie to call the state, whatever the relevant department is, to, hello, Diana, Shindler, to um, get somebody out here then to do two permits for propane tank installations in the town of Southampton. Okay, and what about future permits if something comes future? Between now and the return of yeah. the... Well, conduct whatever business is necessary. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Is, is this normal, Bill, with other departments? or It doesn't make sense to me at all. No. It's not. Okay, so we should have somebody that's qualified and educated and ready to go if anything were to ever happen to the chief or... Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, we have a motion that's been made in second to authorize Reggie to interact with the appropriate people in Boston to get someone out here for these two existing uh, pending propane tank inspections and should anything else come up. Okay. We now have a return of the fire chief. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thanks. Okay. That is the final of my report. Then we scope. Good. What's your P.U.R. Lars check? W.P.R.? Well, that's the historical commission. We didn't. Actually, the contract did arrive. It's yeah, The original it. is in the signature folder. Mm -hmm. And that is the contract, if I'm not mistaken, that was sent to the uh, the participants that received the bid packages. Right. So he just sent that back. And the historical commission would like you to sign off. You had already approved the PI construction for 24-7. Koza was in here yes. and he made a presentation a few meetings ago. We did a, approve that yes. award of that bid. So we need to sign this? Yes, okay. please. So if you want us to do that now, we can sure. We've already approved this, so let me check and see what the... Looks like we all signed this. This was another original from the power. Yes. So it's an extra one. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> yep. I do. Um, it's, we're going to pass it around. This is an original. Okay. So we'll sign it as we have voted. So the owner is the town of Southampton. So by its and by its. We'll say select board. Mm hmm. would be the historical commission. Yes. Okay. And we have a paper bond from Western Surety which goes along with this contract. Okay. This is part of the I think we have to sign that. Huh? Okay, moving on then. We are still waiting for those other folks. Diana, it's great to see you. Um, Thank you. Nice to, nice to see you. That side of the microphones. <laughs> I passed around your card too, so a very, very nice card that you sent. Okay, other business announcements. We do have October 4th and 18th, November 1st, obviously the meeting's coming up. And we're doing this signature right now on the school roof, schoolhouse roof. Charter Communications, we, at the risk of offending our neighbors to the south of the United States, did talk last week about we're sort of at a stalemate there or a standoff. 
Timber cutting plans, nothing to review. New town hall updates. Custodial, I need to get with Joe Muse. Actually, I met, I sat down and met with Joe Muse. Um, he gave me his proposal of what he does and what he thinks is needed in this building. And as far as his job description, um, that is still being researched if we can find it in the personnel files. Good. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, um, the grand opening, I did see some email traffic about that now. It looks like November the 1st. Yes. Does everybody want yes. to? Excuse me, um, I just was wondering about the Charter Communications contract. Um, I just need to be educated on this. I, I, ever since I've been coming here, I've been hearing about it. We've been putting it off and off and off. And I'm just wondering when we're going to discuss the details of that and when we're going to get October 4th, that. Tom Cohen, who's the Director of Government Relations for Charter, will be here to explain his position. But isn't there anything we should discuss before that? Ourselves? You know, when he comes here, you know, we're supposed to be... Um, maybe to the contract and what they're looking to do before before he arrives? The point of disagreement is around what they want to build a non-customer Southampton resident to move a pole. And he was going to come in and explain why they wanted to charge that much. So right. we're an intermediary in this case between charter and Southampton resident. Right. But I mean the the, the contract itself. Where do we go? <coughs> okay. As soon as we agree on so that's what so we that's it just that yeah. one. It. It's been vetted by town council and yeah, that's the only thing, that's the only issue between us and signing out. Were you here when we had the discussions and you know, was here and well the contract yeah, and some of it, but I mean the contract itself I Contracts all ready to go with that notable exception. I have a question. Is the Moving the wires from the old town hall included in that contract? To it is. I asked there. Tom Cohen specifically on August 30th or 31st when I spoke with him. I said, Tom, when are you going to move the coax cable? And he said, when you guys give me the contract. Okay. So that's what brought up the discussion last week when Mr. Phelan said, well, we each have a gun to each other's head. Okay. So that's in a nutshell what we have right now. At no cost to us, they're going to move the line over. Once right. we sign the contract. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's in the contract? Yes. Mm -hmm. That is a part of the contract. Correct. Okay, in regard to that poll being moved, that has not been ratified, am I correct? Correct. You know, we're going to be asked to make a decision whether to support this, yes or no. Mm -hmm. And I don't like making any decisions unless I know all the facts, and that means going out there and looking at it. Mm -hmm. Mike? In other words, do we, right. have, do we have both parties here? I want to see it, and I, I want to see what I feel on it, too, besides hearing what they have to say. And in that way, I'm going to be comfortable making the right decision. I got <laughs> Big chair. I feel like grandpa. <laughs> We're talking about the charter contract. And the full We're still in the stand -up. <laughs> we still go by. We still stand. You got the old time receipt. I know. I feel like I'm in grandpa's share. <laughs> okay, okay, so uh, yes, Ed. Uh, I had a meeting with this cable uh, company and the party who uh, has that hole in their house um, twice. And uh, there was a lot of tension. Supposedly got resolved before I left. Uh, they were going to bury the wire with a wire to the cable underground and tied it to John and Judge Circle. The reason I was there is that they intercepted the line, not cable TV, but by the contractor and shot cable TV lines twice. So I immediately responded to off the list to resolve some of this. I'm not sure if the polls came down or it's being moved, but there was an animal solution that they were working out and agreed to. Um, uh, I don't know if it was cast in stone, they be here two weeks until it was five weeks. Okay. Okay, so you know. That's some great information. But that's, that's what I asked them. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to push uh, permission to work on our right eye mm -hmm. and bury the line. Uh, and, and I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I'm not sure. They talked about the fall. 
Well, if they bury the lines, wouldn't the pole be extraneous because it, the electricity and phones already come off there? I agree with you. Um, and I think that's what we're working for. But the individual house has been tightened by a single pole for that. But now the ties of the giants and giants, 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 Yeah, I appreciate that. And the reason that the representative from Charter won't be here until October 4th is that he goes around to a lot of different meetings in the state, and a lot of people have meetings on Tuesday night. So he said he'd be willing to come out on a night other than Tuesday to meet with us, but we had a date some time ago to as soon as he was available, which is October 4th. So that's where we are. But the news that Ed has just given us is, you know, there's been some movement on Tuesday. So. But because how long have we been saying we've been going to sign a contract? Well, it took 110 years to get the cemetery <laughs> oh, no. So it took 11 years to get the, what was that contract? Oh, to get this building renovated. Oh, no. More than that. More than that. And, and, and Norris, Norris was 15, I think. Yeah, so I just, you know, I understand you're in your first term, but there's a thing <laughs> called relation of time and governmental time. I'm just trying to get the variables, you know, just to understand. <laughs> No, a variable is like a second is one sixtieth of a minute. Oh. Here it doesn't work at all. It's about a year. <laughs> okay. Okay. <That's> <laughs> okay, so then um grand opening kitchen punch list. Reggie, do you have any info? Actually, um in your packets you should have a copy of an email from Dan Colley. I don't recall exactly when you had discussed the Windows test. You wanted to know the dollar amount of it how much it would cost. Quite some time ago, probably a year ago. Remember Ed and I talked about my drawer with my pen. In this in this packet, he has uh, a quote of thirty three ten to do the Windows test. That was for the one window. These for these windows, the square windows. The clerk yes. windows. Yeah. <coughs> However, I, I'm sure you see it in the email. I had told him how um, there was water sprayed in the select board's office window, and that water came directly in. So, I don't know. Well, there's two different questions. Can I clarify that, Reggie? Yes. Okay, I don't think we were there, but did some kid shoot the window out? Uh, somebody, it wasn't a kid, okay. it was an adult. That's altogether different. Nope, they, they sprayed it, they sprayed the oh, window okay. with the hose. When I was at the meeting upstairs, they said, well, if somebody shoots through the hose, it's really in the extreme condition. But if you power wash, but if you power wash your house, does the water get into, through the windows? Okay. I power wash my house and the water does not come in. Oh, okay. I don't know if somebody hit it with a hose. Oh, no, they were playing around. Okay, so yeah. did we have an estimated cost and a pretty firm price or firm price to test the windows. The Thirty-three ten. But if you, if the board desires to do additional windows besides these windows here, it will cost a little more. That makes that sense. Is correct. Well, I'm kind of disappointed to see water rolling down the back here all of a sudden. There's a water stain between these yeah, windows. Because the uh, seams in the gutter, gutter uh, and there's debris in the gutter. We've had some pretty good oh, yeah. So is it a design problem? An architect? Maybe it's that that I don't know what came back to me as to answer my question, it's what was that? 
but obviously my, I'm going to who spec. And I agree with you, my comment is why you put five inch spec, where it is a six inch demand. And we've talked about that before, and I think that's where the you were involved with that. We walked the building, everything was moving out. They came and caught the scenes. Another concern I have is everybody did put some seamless gutters. Why don't we have eight foot gutters? There were eight foot gutters? They're basically eight to ten foot. They haven't seen it. But that's what we spec. Continuing about it. Well, I mean, you can't if the spec was wrong and the architect. That's what I'm going to the design is wrong. If it was my house, I would have had it bigger than the normal. For the building reuse committee, did you see the email from this afternoon? I saw some of them. I don't know. I saw the last one. <clears throat> Once they were getting to a point of diminishing returns yeah. in negotiations. Yeah. So actually, I want to bring that up with respect to the kitchen. Too. So. Would it be reasonable to consider the gutter as part of the diminishing returns, with meaning going back to the contract or the architect and all the way through that? I, was, I mean, I told them that when they were working with them, they were all going to touch those gutters and things. But we still have another month or so on the warranty work. Mm -hmm. They don't want to fall on the warranty work, that's why I'm not paying. Right, and size isn't a warranty issue unless it was spec that way. You must be spec, I think. Right, if it was designed, if that's. If when they take their calculations from roof runoff and rainfall and that sort of thing, they plug them into a chart, and if it comes back at a six inch rain gutter and they put up a five, we got us problem. It depends on the amount, I would assume, and I'm no architect, that it depends on the amount of roof they're draining, this pitch, and all of the other factors that go into it. Mm -hmm. I'm on the same page. I've had this argument for these two or three times. So having been through myself, and Doug has as well, several of these iterations with the Building Reuse Committee, and I'm at the point where I am believing that they, when they say we're at a point of diminishing returns, we're trying to go back, but at the same time there may be some cash left sometimes. It's, here's the cash to... Well, if it's as they respect, and you can't hold the, the, the our contractor responsible, this may, this may go back somewhere other than the contract. Well, yeah, you're right. Well, we did not fill out the paperwork which DCAM requires after your, a uh, general contractor does a job. And, uh, am I correct? Nobody filled that out yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because at the Building Reuse Committee, no one wanted to take the responsibility to fill it out for fear they would get sued. Okay, well, yeah. we should still be, we should, okay, we should still be able to, and Diana, you're probably aware of this, fill out a form, and it's a performance on how the general contractor did, and send that to DCAM, and then other people that go to utilize their services can view that. And we didn't, we got all good reviews from people uh, in regard to Five Star, so it was one of the two things. They didn't want to say the truth for fear of legal ramification, or Five Star did a wonderful job for them and a crummy job for us. Mm -hmm. So I'm painting a picture, and it's as black and white as can be. Yeah, so we, when we fill out, the selectmen should fill it out, and uh, Mr. Phelan had already advised us then to send it to our legal counsel to ensure that we're not saying something inappropriate, but we still want to say the correct thing so other people don't get the same housing we got. That's my thought. And, and, and that's, the, the first question becomes the windows. Are we going to do the test for the windows? And the this price? is the first I heard of the test. Uh, is this the board selection? <coughs> no, we talked about it. Yeah, we, we talked about that, but I also, was this from Siemens? No. no, Siemens did not do the test in the not building. The According to Beth Greenblatt, she said there was no test completed. Because it's a new building and it's under warranty, they did it with other buildings. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, then I have here an 
email to Reggie from Dan Colley, exactly to that effect, is referencing the clear story windows in the meeting room that leaked this past winter, being those up there, of course. And he said, I negotiated a better price, you need one day or one window, just trying to discover the issue, not to test all the assemblies. And that was where that 3310 came from. So, I um, mean, this is suggestion. Well, we know there was a leak, I think we should test. Do we have a window that leaked? That we know only one window that leaked, or did they all leak? I think we should test these. Yeah, but that's the problem. It's 2,000 for one. 3310. 3310. Is that one window or four? Um, that is four individual windows. So they're testing one window for 3,000. Well, is this uh, the account recommendation? No, it just is information, yeah. Do you Maybe we should get a couple of calls. Yeah, yeah. Dan Cox. The thing is setting up. It's, it's, it's mobilization and setting up. That's your biggest cost. So if they're here, you should be able to set up and do several of those a lot easier than just one. That's why. The yeah. question would be what are they testing for too? True. The ability to resist water leakage, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But, it's, but it's, we, we, when we were testing windows, but are they solely testing windows? When you think, your opinion I think from last year was that there's a membrane roof that doesn't go up or membrane that doesn't go up high enough. Well, you know, it hasn't determined what the actual problem is. The water has not come through the windows. It came through the, um, the uh, molding and the trim. Right. So, so, so it could be at the corners where there's not a good seal. Mm -hmm. So or testing windows may prove not nothing. Not the you know, on the silk, and it's by face coming down. Well, I so we think we need to find out what testing the window means. Does it mean testing the sill, the installation, the area around mm -hmm. it, the membrane? Mm -hmm. So maybe if we got some more information on what we get for 3310. Well, he's saying, he's attributing this one of his problems to the snow pile up. Because right. the winter he had. Correct. And so I heard it's going to be another tough winter. The squirrels burning the acorns. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so if we have the problem again with all the snow, what can we do to protect the windows before it happens again? Um, you want to protect the room. I mean, you want to seal it so you don't have a leakage. Yeah, membrane comes out just to the blow of the ceiling. And blood on the floor where the windows are. Yeah. And that was going to be all right. Oh. Okay, so that's, I mean, I'm not Dan Collin, I'm Ben Collin. And my comment with Dan Collin is that there is something yeah, do. seeping in yeah, where the membrane gets the windows. Do we, have an, do we hire an architect to go through the plans and make sure they were done properly? I believe there was a peer review, yes. I believe there was. I think it's required by past I mean, But I mean, do we need someone else? A third pair of eyes? Because we all know how those reviews sometimes go. Okay. You know, you, you review my plans I and believe, I'll review. I believe there was a peer review. I'm more positive there was a peer review. But I review your plans this week and next week you review my plans so no one ever really puts a hard scrutiny to them. I don't I, I, I'm just fed up at this point in time. Well, the building reuse committee is going to be talking about the financing, also how much money they have, and they've got to, so we need to find that out. It would be available to come back to the town, which may be available for this. I mean, I, I see testing the windows, and okay, a test of the windows, the glass is fine, but that doesn't answer our question where the water's coming from. Well, presumably you set up the test so it does get to the root cause of the leakage, which could be water under pressure, water under one atmosphere, water flowing downhill, you know, the various ways that water moves. But what are they, t again, they're testing the windows. What are they testing? Right, exactly. So we need to find out what a test actually means. My take on it is when we had our first three or four snowfalls, it was hard. When we had that last big one, we had a lot of food above the member. When we are at that point, we were just coming into the building, and it started leaking. I think the first or second we were here, it started leaking when the snow was that hot. They came and showed the, the rest of the window. I don't think we had any other events like that, just when we had all that snow. So that leads me to believe the problem is the sill where it meets the window, not the window. I believe most people have come to that same conclusion. There's something that maybe not been talked about.
document to avoid an impact or something? They didn't. They didn't weatherproof before they put the trim up. They didn't weatherproof behind it. So what would we like to do then with respect to this quote that we have and or the test to get more information, yeah. get some... Uh, I move that we ask for who's doing the test and what are they testing for? Where are they testing in the testing procedures? If we're spending $3,000, we ought to know what we're getting. Don't we, uh, shouldn't we request an in-depth proposal to what they're doing? Yeah. Well, they do mention in here that there's a two-day test that costs more money. So I would get a distinction between the one day and the two day. It's kind of like DNA when you only get half of it, you know? You do kind of um, want to know. No offense, but um, I think we might want to have something that's totally separate from this, that no contact from anybody. Right. That maybe by, you know, by community. Mm -hmm. And I can look into that for you. My other is, I think that's where I would go, is something that has no contact from anybody here and say, this is what we found. Okay, if, and I agree with you, but wouldn't it behoove us to get a detailed proposal from these people, and that's going to say exactly what we've got to do and the scope of work we can propose to somebody else? Did you follow me? Yeah. In other words, they're going to tell us where we're going, because none of us are qualified to do this. Okay, so we have motions been made then to get a description of the test in all of its different variations, and then we will decide what to do from that about getting okay. Okay. quotes. Do we have a second? Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 David, you're on. He's actually all set. He does not need to talk with That was quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> please, I don't want to take up your time. Well, I'll just explain. We had our hurricane, I green. They pull tree uh, split on Pequot Road, half one on the wires, half one on the, luckily not on somebody's house, it turned and went on their driveway. So we cleaned that up. Another <coughs> beautiful maple blew down on uh, High Street. Yeah, next to me. Yeah. The dead one on the other side of the road is still standing, and the nice one went down. And then there are a bunch of trees on uh, Gun Road. So that was a day they're going to find money from me on that. Maybe I should just explain a little bit about uh, seeing the electric company. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there was another large double oak, the same as the one that went on Pequot, just like this. It uh, was an elderly lady, the um, uh, nephew, called me about it. And the thing was opening up, and it opened up about that much. It was leaning right over the house. And of course, there's a lot of juice on Howard Meadow. So we ran and uh, got a chain, and we chained it up cinched it up and I got a hold of the electric company which isn't the easiest thing and they did get a pocket truck for us um, which had to be the 70 footer and they took it down the next day it took it down a day and a half so that's also money for the police officer and us doing a little bit of cleanup uh, so the finance committee is going to find money for us on that but I did take the supervisor around and show them some of the other dead trees that are near the wires they will pay for the bucket truck, but we have to pay for the police officer, and they'd ask if we could help with some of the cleanup. Now, they got to find some funding for that, because their funds are devastated because of the storms. And they said they'd get back to me, but that's something I told the finance committee about, that um, I I'm going to make a list of these trees and try to estimate what I think it'll, because it's not free, even if the electric company does it, there's still expense. The shared cost between us and the electric. Okay. Yeah. One of the things you have to understand now, there's a whole lot of regulations. They don't work as fast as they used to. Um, they have set a speed of doing things, and it's going to be uh, kind of pricey, even with them doing the work. So I'll try to make this. We looked at about 20 trees. We took a list of over 20 trees, just High Street, Maple Street, um, Russell the Road and Crooked Ledge. And, and some of these trees are huge. Um, and they're right over the wire, so I'm gonna make a list for the finance committee, kind of guess to make some of our costs. Maybe we can do some this year. 
maybe we'll do some more next year. Mm -hmm. That's okay. And, and see where we go from there. How are your funds now? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just wondering. A uh, we just looked at it. <laughs> uh, last year, we worked from June and we went through it in July. So I used up last year. We, we kind of did a blitz going down some of the roads with the tractor and some with the climber, taking limbs off, dead trees, and we're able to get a lot of trees down that way. But I, I know there's trees on this side of town. If I jump around like that, we don't get that much done. Uh, and some of those trees, for instance, that old cross from the school, they probably would have cost over $3,000 to take that one tree down. So I'm trying to spread getting uh, some of the stuff that we can make production on. And then if I get the electric company to do some of the topping, maybe we can stretch our money as far as we can. Mm -hmm. and, and then, as mentioned, if he paid for one day with a bucket truck, uh, that would be stuff that's not made of wires. That Town of trees, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. Yeah, Good luck. Dave, yeah. Yeah. I know you, you receive my phone calls all the time. I mean, we still have about 40 or 50 trees that I know you will the last four or five years you put X's on. I hope you can tell the clients to me about that. Those need to be addressed. Those are falling down. We're picking up all the time with them and too. It's not just he's cutting down trees. But he's got, he's got a large caseload of stuff that's kind of come down. Yeah. We have been negligent in giving this guy some money to do his job. He's probably, we try to help him out as much as we can, but the <coughs> citizens come to us to take him down their own trees because he's only got to come out. I completely agree. I mean, I have had two planes from the branches falling out of the trees, hitting cars. They're town owned trees, they're not private trees. So we need to uh, start uh, not ignoring, and I'm not saying we're ignoring, but they have been neglected for the last 10 years, not through his efforts, lack of funding. Mm -hmm. yeah, so is Lady Hart. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. And okay. Jackie had a question for you, Ed, and maybe David Goodmind is listening on this emergency payments. Yeah, I was wondering if FEMA had allocated any funds because of Irene and the damage in town. Not for this, not enough. Um. We, we have declared emergencies we got, but this particular round is not enough for us to recover. And what we're going to get is minimum, and it's not worth the effort. When we really need it, we should apply for it. Um, the amount of money we got in the past was done. Our washout goes. Uh, we did a good job policing during the storm for ventilation happening this time. And we did the material to hold them in check, and it worked out. They're not going to pay for the break falling down unless there's, there's certain criteria. During the storm, uh, we were out holding a ball roll, so it was very close. They were closed, they were closed less than two hours. So these are the things they, they, you know, these are. Things that they expect us to do as a community. Okay. Things that are above and beyond that have to work with us. Okay. Some towns around us will get some applications time. A lot of times we got, you know, thirty five thousand dollars, other towns didn't. So, so uh, I just don't wanna um, apply for it and find out, you know, from being a little frivolous here about what's going on. And there are very that uh, uh, um, Okay, thanks, Dave. Thank you. Okay, see. All right, um, John Furman is still upstairs meeting. Yeah, I'm not sure where John Okay, we just have one other item then, which is the kitchen. And Ed, thanks to your crew for going in there and doing the painting. I did volunteer, but I was in Maine that week. So. I no second in command. Is there anything you want to make on Reggie? No. Oh. Why, why, why. The um. deal that got brokered got fell apart again. <laughs> right? Several times. Yeah. Well, the other thing is that the BRC, in their most recent memo, their agenda for next week's meeting, they talk about the disposition of the senior center, whereas they actually have disavowed any association with finishing that, saying it was not part of the contract. So okay. we, have, we seem to be back to this conflict between who is in charge of this and who is not. And well, at least we're getting closer. They we're all we're on. Up, that's all done. Ceiling's done. Yeah. Yeah. Put the fan in, then you know, uh, or the exhaust fan, and we finished the painting. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we did a lot of cleanup. We're working on the attic, taking care of stuff that wasn't covered at the time. So we won't lose all kinds of heat. We're trying to do that now. Mm -hmm. And I requested Ed that he start to take the materials, the uh, things out of that trailer from the first day. I'm not going to take them off. Of <laughs> no, I mean, that was not appropriate. But we need to do a little bit of work to start wiping it out. Okay, so we are in limbo. Number one's away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, well, I oh, talked sorry. to Josh in the hall too last week, and he said that he was looking into three basin sinks as well. Actually, okay, where it left off, Doug had asked me to get a scope for the plumber at your last meeting so that you could install the three bay with the separate hand washing. So, in communicating with Pat Roberts, Pat Roberts stated, <laughs> sorry, that he's not going to do the design, that I need to speak with the Board of Health. I speak with the Board of Health, they say they're not going to do the design, it's not their job. So I called up Dan Cawley, who's the architect, and I figured he's the architect, he should know, and he did design in the first place. So I went right to the source and told him what the Board of Health requires, and Dan Cawley stated, if we change it where we install the three bay sink, the sink with the separate hand washing, the three bay, you would have to install a grease trap, and by doing so, it's going to change the definition of a commercial kitchen. By doing that, you have to rip up the wall and the floor because you have to change the piping. Right now, we have a two inch pipe, this is all plumbing stuff, not my forte, to a three inch, which is going to cost the town at least $20,000 to do so. So, Dan Colley disagrees with the opinion of the Board of Health on stating that is a requirement of the Senior Center Kitchen. He said there was four items that the town had to meet and the town met three. The fourth was the approval of the variance from the Board of Health. He stated that the Board of Health is the, the, the folks who are holding up the process and I went to Josh and I repeated everything to Josh on Friday and Josh said okay you know what we'll leave it the way it is why don't we and actually Dan Colley recommended installing the hand washing sink on the other side where the bathroom is that way it's still on the same wall with the plumbing so Josh agreed to leave it as it is use all the appliances excluding the dishwasher because he wanted to do further research pending the sanitation and he was okay with the separate hand washing sink on Friday I say on Friday. On Monday, that changed. On Monday, Josh is just not comfortable with the fact with the two bay with the separate bowl, he wants to go back to the three bay. Oh my lord. So, where we're at right now, actually I found in, I don't know, it's a one day a month lunch. That's all it is. So under mass public health, and I did not give you the copies, I made the copies, I did not give them to you. It's under temporary food establishments. So I asked Josh, wouldn't it fall under the temporary food establishment where it's not as strict as what you're saying? And that's where we're at right now. On that note, and then Josh came in today and asked if the COA could draft up a variance request to the Board of Health stating their restrictions, no paper plates, no plastic ware, no cups. Just paper plates, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you have to wipe off the grease, trap, and so forth, so forth. Uh, COA was not in the building. I did get a verbal from Jennifer, but I was instructed not to submit that draft variance request by the, the actual board, so I did not submit it. So now we have to wait another 30 days, because that's when the Board of Health is meeting next. So that's where we're at. Okay, who, I have a question, if I may. Yes. Constantly, the department of the top, you run this building. Right. You run every facet of the building. Right. How come you're not doing the application? How come not everybody's sitting in front of us so we can get this worked out and get somebody's right. name? We've done that. Yeah. Well, three, three times. times. We lock the door until they come to some we agreement. We did that three times. No. Yeah. We locked the door, went upstairs. Yeah. Then this is crazy. Every time we turn around, it's like hitting a moving target. They ch somebody changes their idea of what's right and what's wrong. 
And the fact that we can't, you know, if it takes the plumbing inspector, the building inspector, the Board of Health, Josh, and Council on Aging all in one room and sign off on the stamp. We did that. We did that. times. Then, and I were there. Yeah, but not in this room with five of us glaring at them. And until they emerge with an agreement amongst themselves, uh, with a signature on the page, nobody goes home. Well, that is a good point, though, to the extent that we are the custodians of this building, you know, custodian in the administrative sense, why could we not actually put forth that the variance, variance request? Because, because request. what's going to happen when you put forth the variance request and it gets them out? Because someone changes the target. Well, just, you know, I'm just trying to identify. Right. Right. You're the responsible party for the whole building. Right. right. Why did the council agent come to you to get permission? We'll have to ask permission to do the variance. So why don't you do the variance? So why can't we get our employees in front of us to come to a, a conclusion on a reason? Well, like Bob said, this is the third or fourth time we have to spot a reason. Third time. Fourth, we're at the fourth time now. Fourth time that we've had complete agreement to move forward. Okay, I have a question to kind of clarify. Maybe we can make this happen tonight. The Board of Health asked the consular agent for a letter requesting what? A variance request. To keep it the way could, it is. Could not the select board make that request? I think that's what, you, yeah, that's what we're saying. Could, could we? Okay, why don't we do it right now? If they're still in session, yeah, I have it. I can give it to you, and I'll just I'll cross off council on aging. Good. Okay, let's board. do it. Is that good? Do you make a motion? We do that. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. I'll go to the board of health and tell them not to abstain, not to leave. Go ahead.